double knock. I guess this is a three eighths uh, drill, but we can see at least the spindle and truck do run true. Only 1600 RPM, but five and a half amps, tons of power really. Being a planetary gearbox, it does sound pretty nice under load. Alright, we have a half dull inch and a half spade bit. Let's uh, see how it does with a little bit more uh, load on it here. Right at the brakes, yeah. Did I just burn it up? I think I just burned it up. Didn't burn it up, actually popped the breaker, surprisingly enough, although I have other stuff running on this. Definitely got pretty warm doing that, but that was a pretty heavy duty operation. I was pressing pretty hard on this old uh, dulled spade bit. Caddis Maximus here. This time with a video about the Ryobi D6, D43. Decided to start the video off with the drill test. Anyway, I like I don't review uh, power tools as often as really I'd like to, but when I find these uh, even lesser models, I still like to do videos about them. Especially when this is $60 at Home Depot. There's some things I definitely like about it, but there's some other things. For right around the same price, you know, this is 5.5 amps at 1600 RPM. It actually has good torque, but for right around that same price, you can get the rigid, whatever this is, the R7000, that's 6.5 amps, 2500 RPM. It delivers a little bit less torque, but it's all ball bearing. It has a nice tight spindle. It actually has a better chuck with a metal collar on the back. Probably a better drill overall. And for cheaper, in like the $45 range, that would make it about 25% cheaper is this Black & Decker, the uh, DR260. This is 1500 RPM, same 5.5 amp motor. And the advantage of the Black & Decker is that it has a rotating brush card, so it actually delivers full power in forward and reverse. If this gets jammed in forward, and you reverse it, you'll have the same amount of power to unjam it. Even though it does use sleeve bearings for the primary spindle, motor is all ball is ball and needle bearing on this. It's all ball bearing on the Ryobi. But the one thing you can say about sleeve bearings is even though it does this, zero chuck wobble. This chuck is absolutely tight. The interesting thing about this Ryobi is the fact that it uses a planetary gearbox. The chuck's really cheesy, all plastic collars, and unfortunately, there's a big problem, which is this wobbly chuck. And other than that, there's something to like. It actually has, you know, traditional lock-on, pretty decent ergonomics. It is pretty lightweight, and it is pretty compact. If we compare it to the Rigid, it's just a little bit shorter, maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch shorter than the Rigid, maybe if I... Put it up like that compared to the black and decker it's probably an inch and a half shorter than the black and decker and it is lightweight and it is compact it did get pretty warm but it didn't leave too many you know gnarly smells doing those 
heavier duty drilling operations and it actually did it just fine the planetary gearbox sounds pretty good and it's actually ryobi is one of the very few companies very few it's extremely rare to have a quarter drill with a planetary gearbox and the best i can figure i mean they, they have lots of advantages that's why they're used all on cordless drills lighter weight much higher torque capacity for a given uh, weight and physical size um, but just about all quarter drills are spur gears and I, because they're a little cheaper to manufacture but I think Ryobi's thoughts are they're just going to use gears from uh, their cordless drills and then just put it in this quarter drill uh, it'll have a different molding for the plastic outer housing but I'm sure the, the, the gears themselves will be interchangeable one or another of Ryobi's cordless drills pretty smooth variable speed no belt hook no provision to hold bits, so it's a little bit, you know, especially for $60, a little bit annoying there. But then once again, the biggest thing is you got to, if a drill is going to do anything, it's going to have a spindle that actually doesn't wobble around. When you put pressure on it, it's really not too bad at times to self-stabilize, but still, that's an issue because you'll try to start, especially in metal drilling, it'll make it want to uh, wander a little bit. So a little bit annoying there. A truck does not have a lock screw and it doesn't even have a threaded hole they just basically torque the truck on tight enough to where it won't come loose even under most situations even under uh, heavy reversing operate or excuse me during heavy reversing operations but other than that I mean they have some things going using that planetary gearbox allows them to make it shorter as we saw has a really big fan moves a lot of air high speed motor and it is compact I mean just compact and it is pretty lightweight this is I mean if they had a better spindle this would be a really good uh, homeowners drill we got 11 screws holding it on 2 4 6 7 9 11 really surprised about that let's take a look inside you know that's just the deal for 60 bucks at Home Depot for this it needs to have a better spindle I mean the planetary gears aren't that big of a deal I'm keeping these screws organized until I know that they're all the same size they appear to all be the same size so far And they are. Sometimes some of the screws will be shorter, like around the, the chuck spindle there. But in this case, all 11 screws, all the same size. I mean, the body's held together pretty well. <clears throat> Decent strain relief. Come on now. really doesn't want to come apart there we go let's take a look at the grade of the plastic PPGF 30 so it's polypropylene 30 percent fiberglass not PA which is nylon or PC which is polycarbonate but still generally okay motor still pretty warm from my uh, robust operation See the ball bearing in the back? The other all ball bearing is right there in the gearbox. Take a look at the trigger here. Six amps, 120 volts AC. So not <laughs> on a five and a half amp drill, barely any overrating. So doing those heavy duty drilling operations, either the windings are gonna burn up on the motor or you're gonna burn out the trigger, one of the two. Uh, over you know if you do it too much other than that interesting convolution couple pinches on the cable but at least it's the strain relief is not molded in the wire so you can just replace the wire you have to you know there's actually extra holes to relieve the pressure for the spring contacts 
You can just see them there. You just poke a, something like an O-ring pick in there. That'll allow you to re release the wires. Tin them with solder so they're rigid enough and you just pop them back in. So at least it's pretty easy to replace the wires. We can see that the brush is held up all right. They haven't melted or anything. That's one of the issues. Polypropylene doesn't have quite as much uh, heat durability. But the brushes seem okay. Pinch contacts on the motor, you know, nothing special there, but they do have a quite a heavy duty varnish on it, so that's at least nice to see. We see tight commutation bars on here, which means uh, it's a high speed motor, and you could hear that. There's that fan, it's actually quite large, and we actually have blades on the front side of it, which is a little bit interesting. And we can see the dust buildup on the gearbox, so that's a little bit odd. I wonder if they're doing that as an attempt to try to add just a little bit of airflow for the gearbox, but that's also something unique. Never seen a fan that has uh, blades on the front. Suppose we'll uh, take a look at this gearbox too. We gotta pry everything out of here. Come on now. We're just able to finagle it out of there without quite causing the brushes to fully retract. Rubber sealed ball bearing on the front. Pretty big uh, spindle there. They all, the gears ought to last a halfway decent amount of time. Surprisingly enough, they are using a planetary gearbox, but it doesn't have a one-way sprag clutch to make it easier to tighten the chuck, which is a little bit annoying. We do have a little foam steel in there which doesn't make a ton of sense to me to tell you the truth considering it already has a rubber sealed ball bearing I don't know what the purpose of this little foam seal is for to tell you the truth um, I guess to help a little bit less debris from getting into the gearbox I suppose I mean not a lot else to say there Let's see how many gears And indeed, the gearbox screws are exactly the same as the case screw, so you really can't screw this up, pun intended. There's our outer case. Here's our first thrust washer. We do have all steel, steel gears, steel ring gear. Continue to dig in here. A little worried that they may have chosen to use plastic planet gears, but I'm glad that you chose to use steel. Not a ton of grease. It is a double reduction gearbox, so they're just relying on like a sleeve bushing or a bearing in front to stabilize that. One large common ring gear. And then nicely nice to see four little planet gear, four gears on the secondary stage. So it's taking a little bit more load. So they're gonna not only have four gears, but they're about 30% wider. So What's that, 65% more strength? Uh, four gears over three would be 33% stronger if they're the same width, plus being 30% wider, so I'm guessing around 60% stronger. Pull this out. Well, we can actually see that's exact, that's what it looks like, that is indeed a ball bearing but it appears actually they tried I'm surprised it's so wobbly so there's that inner ball bearing and then this is the front ball bearing sealed so it's actually twin bearings in the front of this but it still wobbles around I'm trying to figure out if that's 
Oh. I actually popped out that bearing. I think I figured out what the issue is. I believe the issue is that there just isn't, it's just not quite tight enough. And what's happened here is that just the light amount of use has just squished the plastic enough both this way so it can move back and forth a little bit as well as maybe rounded this out a little bit because that is a pretty narrow shoulder and that's what's unfortunately allowing this to wobble around so much like DeWalt, how DeWalt gets their spindles so tight and their cordless drills is instead of using two bearings like this they just use one really long wide uh, needle bearing and that's probably what Ryobi should have done here because they certainly tried. I'm actually really surprised about that. Dual ball bearings on the spindle. And it still has a fair amount of wobble. It's actually not a bad gearbox. And wham. <laughs> we got it back together. Just a crying shame. Probably actually tried. So for $60, you're actually getting something. Dual ball bearings on the motor. <laughs> True dual ball bearings on the spindle. It's just... They're so small and they're so close together. They should have done something to re like put in a big metal collar that the bearing sat in and then the front of the gear gearbox, something to prevent them from basically just compressing the plastic because once again, it's a shame. Ryobi for 60 bucks actually tried. You're getting a decent drill with a decent amount of torque, 1600 RPM at five and a half amps. As we saw, it would run that inch and a half spade bit. And it's something unique. They are using a planetary gearbox with all steel gears and steel ring gear and everything. Seven gear planetary, two stage gearbox even. So it actually is a pretty decent gearbox. Actually pretty strong. Probably a lot stronger than a lot of spur gear gearboxes. And it allows them just to make the drill shorter and more lightweight while actually having a quite a strong gearbox. Anyway, so that's my review. It's actually a pretty darn nice drill with good ergonomics and I mean this would be a great just uh, kind of weekend warrior home utility drill for a lot of people if you can just deal with the fact that even though the truck is straight it does run true. I did show that at the beginning where the drill bits run absolutely straight. It's just you know the spindle isn't the most robust. What that also means is that if it gets dropped a lot and hits on the chuck, that's going to really cause it to really want to wobble back and forth. So they need to do a little bit of reinforcing there. Other than that, for $60, bucks, um, i am actually surprised on how competitive it is, especially with the, the unique fan that actually moves just... Moves a ton of air, and if you really are doing heavy-duty operations still pretty restrictive with all these little vents you can just get in there with some little cutters like these and if you want to you can modify it just by clipping out some of these cross beams in here and stuff and uh improve the airflow a lot <laughs> you can imp improve it quite a bit as a matter of fact if you just got rid of some of that restriction but still lose a ton of air and it would work for doing sanding and polishing operations, that type of stuff. Because of the dual ball bearings on the spindle, you're not really worried about too much overheating there. And once again, those planetary gears do sound pretty good. They just don't scream quite like spur gears do. Mainly because the load is just being offset on so many independent little gears. Anyway... I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.